Mitochondria are fundamental to the uh, cause of Parkinson's disease. Basically, Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative process, um, and, uh, and so that means that the cells die. Mitochondria provide all of this, the energy for the cells, and so they fuel the cells so that they can live. When the mitochondria don't work properly, then the cells die. Mitochondria also accelerate the process. We know that alpha-synuclein aggregation is important in this in Parkinson's disease, but and the loss of mitochondrial energy means that those protein protein clearance pathways no longer work efficiently. So then we get our alpha-synuclein aggregation as another disease process. With, with Parkinson's disease, currently we only have symptomatic treatments. With no, knowing that mitochondria and mitochondrial dysfunction contribute to Parkinson's disease, we can now look at trying to protect the cells from dying. What we can do is use ways to refuel the cells uh, with mitochondrial energy and take that as a new approach to treating Parkinson's disease. So like mitochondrial dysfunction, the microbiome can both be a cause and an accelerator of the degenerative process. The micro, we know from patients with Parkinson's disease who have constipation that their microbiome is altered. We don't know whether that's a cause or effect, but we know that that contributes to um, alpha-synuclein aggregation. The current theories are that alpha-synuclein can, be, uh, ag can aggregate in the as a consequence of alterations in the microbiome and feed up towards the brainstem, just like we know that uh, the microbiome in the, in the olfactory tract can uh, enter in and go through the brainstem and then feed down to the, to the gastrointestinal tract. So there's, a, there's an accelerator response that can contribute to the Parkinson's disease, just like the mitochondrial dysfunction can cause a, an accelerated process of these degeneration processes. Now that we know that there are multiple pathogenic mechanisms in Parkinson's disease, we need to take those into account when we're, tr when we're developing neuroprotective treatments. And I suspect that we'll need to have combined therapies to actually uh, treat Parkinson's disease if we are to protect our patients from developing this disorder. This disorder. <laughs>